Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and today's video is basically about there not being a video this week. Um, when I make the videos here in the Tin Barn, sometimes I, I'm a bit ahead on them. I may get up three, four, even five weeks ahead in videos. Uh, other times I'll uh, finish the video that I published on Saturday, I'll finish it up on Friday. Uh, so there's, you know, it's just according to what the projects here in the Tin Barn, how they, how they come about. But in this particular case, I was two weeks uh, ahead. The video that was scheduled to be posted today, I've pulled back offline, and the one that was going to be next week, I pulled it offline as well. Those two videos were about making a tool post grinder. Now, several years ago, I made this little holder for an air operated pencil grinder to use on the tool post. And it worked pretty good. The biggest problem with that, this is, it, well, there's two, two problems. Number one, the pencil doesn't have a lot of power. And number two, these little Dremel abrasive wheels aren't very hard and they will uh, they come apart and they'll wear uh, unevenly. So I decided I'd make a little larger one. Uh, here's what it turned out looking like. This is a Harbor Freight die grinder rated at 22,000 RPMs at 90 PSI. In the first video like I say, the one that was supposed to come out today. What we did, or what I did in that video, was prep the material block. Uh, this block of material, which is 2 inch by, uh, I think, 2.5 by 3, something like that. But we got it prepared, fly cutted it, uh, used a fly cutter, all six sides of it, four sides and two ends. Got it completely cleaned up. Then cut the dovetail. Uh, the main part of that video was, of course, cutting that dovetail. In the second video, I drilled and bored the hole through it uh, to mount the uh, die grinder using two thumb screws uh, to hold it in place. Also in that second video, I made this little uh, valve block on the top with a thumb screw that would be used to actually increase the speed so you didn't have to hold your hand on the lever. Well the third video that I was going to start recording, uh, actually going to start recording it today uh, for three weeks from now, I set this on the lathe, put air to it, uh, also in that second video, I went over setting up a, an air regulator with an inlet and outlet and a, uh, a pressure gauge. But getting prepared for that next video in the series, I put this on the lathe, put air to it, and just took a little piece of steel just, just to test the setup on. Well, folks, it was a absolute failure. This thing ain't worth the value of one of those thumb screws. I'll, I'll salvage the thumb screws off of this, maybe this stone and that air inlet, but this die grinder is junk. It was, uh, uh, I've only had it, well I've had it several years, but I've never used it very much at all. It doesn't have any power whatsoever. It just, it would stall. Uh, I put it up to uh, about 60 pounds of pressure on it. Had this wheel turning about 4,000 RPMs. It's only rated at 3,500 to, to at least four, maybe even 5,000 RPMs. And just as soon as it come in contact with the piece of material, not even hard steel, it would stall it out. I could, it would barely produce a spark. So I said all that to say this, this was a failure. Uh, I won't be posting that videos, but I am going to make a tool grinder. 
uh, tool post grinder. Uh, at least I'm going to make another attempt at it. I've got a different uh, die grinder on the way, not air operated, it'll be electric. And we're going to attempt to make that. So stick with me on the channel and I hope to be back next week with a legit video. Uh, it may be some of the same stuff. It may be cutting a dovetail. Uh, I'll see if this block can be salvaged to, uh, to mount the uh, other die grinder in. If not, I'll start over. Yes. Take care and I'll see you on the next video. Complete failure. Absolutely worthless.